In this video, we are going to learn about authentication protocols in Active Directory. So Active Directory, the main uh, functionality of an Active Directory is to authenticate users, computers and servers. And these are uh, enabled by uh, authentication protocols like uh, NTLM and Kerberos. So there are two protocols, main authentication protocols in Active Directory, NTLM and Kerberos. Compared to NTLM, Kerberos provide a strong mechanism to make uh, authorization uh, strong enough and provide additional security compared to NTLM. So before we talk uh, about all these uh, protocols, I think it's good to have a brief introduction to how the passwords are stored in real world. So when you create an account, you provide a password. Uh, for example, you create a user account for NIAS. You give a username NIAS and you provide a password. So think uh, if these passwords and usernames are stored in plain text in a, a database, what will happen? If something uh, like a hacking or leaking the uh, database information, uh, including this pass stored passwords uh, got in someone's hand, what will happen? They can access uh, not only the services that provided by this identity provider, maybe you are using the same password for uh, other authentication like your bank account or some other confidential things. So the same password get tried on those accounts also and that is going to be a big exploit of uh, users, uh, confidential information and uh, account logins. So in real world, passwords are not stored as plain text. Instead, they are stored as a hash value. So now we need to understand what is a hash value. So hash value means uh, when you enter a password, the password get converted into a non-recoverable uh, format. Uh, that is going to be a unique string and this is known as uh, hashing. It uses some kind of algorithm like SHA1, SHA256 or MT5. These are the algorithms. Uh, that's a mathematical process and convert the passwords that you entered into an unreadable string of characteristics and these characters are not uh, convertible uh, back to the original form. So this irreversible process. So this uh, hash value is going to store in the database. Next time when a user try to log in, uh, the identity provider already have the username and hash value of the user, right? So next time when you try to log in, the user uh, entered the newly entered password going to again convert it into the hash value. And this hash value will be compared with the hash value that's stored in the database. So by this way, uh, the passwords are not stored in the database. So this hash value is compared and provide access to the application. So this provides an advantage that in case if the database the, that stored all this information get leaked, uh, then the people will get a hash value and it is not a convertible uh, back to the original form so that it is secured. Now if you want to see exactly how the hash is uh, working, for example, I give my password as uh, password me, for example. And you can include a salt. The advantage of using salt is the length will be high, right? So it will be uh, more uh, uneasy for if someone want to uh, try your password. Uh, so this a combination of this password me plus the salt uh, will go through a mathematical algorithm. Uh, once I click this uh, get SHA checksum and that is uh, printing an information and this information is stored in the identity provider database. So if someone get this value, there is no way to get back to the original password that I uh, typed uh, during the creation of account. So that is why it is uh, stronger. You can see that there are other hash generators also. So SHA256, SHA384, SHA512. So using uh, SHA256, for example, you will see how strong it is. And I'm going to click on this and you can see that the length is very big compared to SHA1. So and it, it makes it more stronger than SHA1. So this is how it uh, works actually. This is how the passwords are stored in an identity provider database. Another important uh, knowledge that you need to know about uh, is encryption. 
So an encryption means you are converting a readable information into a non-readable format. The difference between an encryption and uh, hashing is when you convert a message uh, uh, to an encrypted format, it is still recoverable. You can recover it back to the original message. But in hashing, when you do a hashing of a particular uh, characters, then it is not recoverable. So that is the difference between encryption and hashing. So in an encryption, there are two processes. You convert it into a non-readable format and you can convert back to the original message. So the process of converting a message to a non-readable format known as cipher or scrambled data is known as encryption. And the process of converting a scrambled data, a non-readable format data or an encrypted message or an encrypted digest to a readable format is known as decryption. So there are two processes involved, encryption and decryption. And if you want to perform an encryption, you need to use a key. So a key is used in order to encrypt a message into a non-readable format. And you can use another key or the same key. So if you are using same key for encryption and decryption, this is known as symmetric encryption. If you are using a different type of keys, then it is known as uh, asymmetric encryption. So here I will be explaining the authentication protocol and that to use encryption. That is why I am giving you a basic idea about encryption. In the coming videos, we will be doing a lot of projects related to uh, encryption and decryption. And that will help you to understand more about uh, what is encryption and how it is used in the real world scenario. Now we are going to learn about NTLM. So NTLM is the first protocol that in our list about uh, learning authentication in Active Directory. So in an NTLM, we have Active Directory. We have a server which provides a service, for example, file server, let's say. And we have a client computer that is uh, the user computer. So when a user wants to access the file server, the user requests access to the file server. If the next step, the file server is going to generate a 16-byte random number, this is called as challenge. And this challenge will be sent back to the client computer. So I am the user, I request access to the file server, then file server send me a challenge, that is 16-byte random number then the client is going to respond with this challenge. So this response will be encrypting the challenge sent by file server with the hash value. So as I told in an encryption, we need to use a key. So here the key is user password hash value. So the response now sent to the file server. That is the, that is the third step. In the next step, the file server will send this to the Active Directory domain controller. The domain controller will decrypt. Domain controller will decrypt the message, the response sent by client over the file server to the Active Directory with the same hash value because Active Directory also contain your password hash value, right? It decrypt, and if it decrypt means what? This user is validated, right? Now the domain controller will let the file server to provide access to the uh, client to use the service. So this is how the NTLM authentication works. So let us summarize what we have learned in this video. We talked about authentication protocol, then how passwords are stored, that was interesting I believe, then hashing and encryption, then NTLM. So in NTLM, the client computer request for access, the service sent a challenge. This challenge is gonna encrypted using the hash key, uh, that is the password of the user. And this is sent to the domain controller by the uh, server which provides the service. Now the domain controller will verify because it also have the hash of your user. So it can decrypt, verify and let the file server know that, okay, this is a good user. Then the file server provide access. So if you look at the process flow, you can see that the user is communicating with the server which provides the service and the server is communicating directly with the domain controller. So even if the user is not directly connected to the domain controller, still the service provider can authenticate it from the Active Directory and provide access to the computers who are not
connected uh, the moment uh, while using the service with uh, domain controller so that is one of the advantage of ntlm but it is uh, still insecure if you compare with the kerberos authentication uh, level of security provided so that is it see you in the next video